So, um, in your case, we did a, the anterior cervical discectomy and fusion uh, almost a year ago, correct? A little almost better than a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Practically, we took the bad disc out. Here's the spine. Our spine is made of disc and bone. Bone, disc, bone, disc. This is C2. Usually C1 is here and uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And these are the discs. Um, these are the nerve roots that are going out. Every single of them go to a certain place. Like Specifically, these three fingers are C6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is uh, the bone. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 is the one that comes between the 5 and 6. This is the C6. This goes to this finger and that's all some muscle, especially grip, is involved. So based on your exam, we have a good idea which of the nerves are being pushed. And in your case, the C5-6 hole where the nerve is going out here is narrow. Now about a year ago, we did ACDF and you were getting better, but mm -hmm. you fell. And obviously symptom got worse after that. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. And in the last few months, uh, actually, you are getting weaker. In a situation like that, where we are already uh, growing here, bone is growing beautifully here, and in the fall, you didn't really break, in, didn't break anything, but mm -hmm. it seems that the, this narrowing here is still a problem. Okay. In a situation like that, we go from the back, actually, because for us to go from the front, we have to go through all the bone that we grew, together and so that's too massive and too um, destabilizing surgery. Yeah, right. Now, in the, this surgery now, we call it posterior uh, lateral mass decompression and fusion. What we do, we make incision in the back of the neck about, um, in the area above and below the levels that we want to address. Mm -hmm. In your case, the, we are going to go in the, the, the C, uh, that surgery was in your case, I think, and the C, um, um, I have to just look it up to make sure that I'm right, showing you the right one. The last surgery was a C5 uh, to T1. So, and here in this area, what we are going to do, uh, go into the hole here, what we call facet and the foramen, and we will start taking small bites here until we have a feeling that we can pass it small little probe through that hole from inside okay and we know it's open depending on how much of this bone we remove if you remove too much we are sometimes concerned about that we are destabilizing it okay in that case we put uh, small screws about a half an inch screws that they go here 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 and connect them with the rod to stabilize it but that's all depend on how much uh, of this uh, bone we have to remove we call that Posterior uh, cervical uh, lateral mass fusion. Okay. That's the official name of that. And and depending on you know where the symptoms are, obviously we will address those holes, those nerves that uh, we know are narrowed based on your exam, but based as well on the imaging, but based as well on the sometimes neurophysiological you know studies like EMG and CV. Mm -hmm. And uh, practically small incision in the um, in the back of the neck pushing the muscle to the side, making a window where the nerves are going out, and then eventually putting screws above and below and internally adding metal where we take the bone off, making the spine weak, and we add metal to make it strong enough to do the job. Now, there are a few things that are extremely important for the what we call posterior cervical fusion. They are very well known and notorious about getting infected because most of the time is the vascularization the problem, but sometimes as well it's just the fact that you're laying on it all day long. Okay. But mm -hmm. they are very, very notorious um, to um, get infected. So we have to be cutting the hair from back of the head down, mm -hmm. and as well we have to keep it very, very clean. Okay. okay? Additionally, once we go, you know, the first seven vertebrae in the neck we call cervical spine. After that, we call them thoracic spine. Okay. In the cervical spine, if we have to go to C7, and most of the time, the le next level, 71, it, uh, it's going to be in a hard kind of situation. There's too much mechanical stress on it. Okay. So most of the rec surgeon recommend, when you, if you have to go to C7, don't stop there. 
go further down. In your case, we have to go further down anyway because 71 is one of your districts right. in the problem. Right. But uh, most of our uh, colleagues uh, they agree that the mechanical stress, if you have to stop at C7, would be too much for the C7 T1. So many uh, times, if you have to go to C7, we usually continue to go to T1, even T2, to, to give it mechanical stability. Right, because right. they don't have much motion there. You don't lose anything on the motion. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the small, tiny screws in this, that we put in C7, sometimes it's not enough to make it stable. Then we put much bigger screws that go called the pedicle screw that go through this structure here. Okay. And then they are bigger and then more screws that can be stable. So in your case, we are going to go in the back and you remove as much bone as we need to open up the holes. And most likely we will have to add, we'll add some metal to internally brace it. And you have to be okay. very careful with the infection. And that you as well, you know, in your case, we have to go to T1 anyway, but sometimes or actually very often we have to go even to T2 Okay. Even one level below it. Any question? No, that actually explains it pretty well. You got the most extended consent about uh, how it works, and I put it online so you can look at it again. Perfect. Okay, thank you.